Welcome to the second example of the Libre practice parts. Let's start by sketching on the XY plane and activating a sketch. As before, I'll grab my line, click on my origin, and draw a vertical line. Again, we'll take note that blue constraints show up as we make our lines. And by adding the proper constraints, it makes easy work of uh, fully constraining our sketches. I'll add a horizontal here. And now we're ready to add dimensions. I'll go from point to point and make this 12. And then point to point here, we'll go with 10. And then point to point here, we'll go with 38. And then point to point here, we'll go with 30. And there we're fully constrained. And notice I did point to point, and I did so for a reason. Let's say we have to go back and edit this sketch. If I delete this line, I still have my dimension of 30 millimeters. If I control Z and get rid of my dimension, if I were to just dimension my line instead of dimensioning from point to point, then if I go back and edit the sketch and get rid of this line, I lose the dimension. Now you can always re-add the dimension, but with uh, the right design intent, that can really come in handy in the future. All right, off of our XY plane, let's make an extrude and let's go a distance of 40 and we'll specify that as mid plane. Next, I'll want to grab my back face here and we'll activate a sketch and we'll go with a rectangle. And this time I'll try constraining with the symmetric constraint. I click on the symmetric constraint, I grab this vertical um, line that I can use as a symmetry. And then I grab these two points, and now the two points will stay symmetric around this point that I've made, or this line that I've specified as my line of symmetry. We'll grab a collinear. We'll take this line and this line and make that collinear. You can also use a coincident constraint, which uh, is probably better if you care about having only the degrees of freedom you're trying to constrain. We'll give this a dimension of 7. We'll go from here to here as a dimension of 30, and we're fully constrained. So I'll deactivate my sketch, we'll do an extrude, and we are going along 40 millimeters, and we'll accept that. So we've gone to a depth of 40 millimeters, and let's talk about what kind of design intents that we'll have when we extrude. I can take this extrusion, we'll go edit, and since we're only going to a distance of 40, then if I edit my sketch and I change this to a distance of say 50 and deactivate and generate to the last feature, you can see that as I update my part, I have this little stop here at the distance of 40 because that's the distance that we extrude cutted. But maybe our intent is to have this go all the way through no matter how we update the part. And if that's the case, we can go to our extrusion here, say edit, and we have an easy through all. And that will make sure that no matter how we update the part, this will always go through everything. So it all depends on design intent and what you intend to do. Um, there, there are many cases where you want that to be a distance, a distance or depth of 40, and there are many cases where you want that to go all the way through. As for now, let me edit my sketch, and I'll take this back to my dimension originally of 30. Next, we'll want to grab another plane to sketch on, and let's go with this back face here. I want to create an oblong shape, and we'll give this a dimension of 24. And then our side length along will be 14, and our angle will be 90. We'll click to place and say apply. Next, I can dimension from here to here and say 20. Likewise, if my intent is to always have this from an edge of 20, like if I have a part that needs to fit on this face and is 20 millimeters away from here, then this is a great way of doing it. Otherwise, I can make it vertical to our origin if my intent is to always have this be centered on the part. 
So these things just vary depending on uh, what our intent is or what we intend to do. Let's go with 12 millimeters here. We'll deactivate. And now let me extrude. And again, if I wish to have this feature update with the length of my part, let's say two geometry. And we'll make sure that this part is always terminated at this face here. So now as I update my part, this feature will always stay the length of this face. And that would be design intent. Next. Let's go back to this face here. And there's a few ways to do this. If I activate a sketch on my back face, and I wish to project a reference feature of this sketch with maintained association, I can of course choose an offset and make this something like three millimeters or whatever distance that I would like and generate a sketch that way. Likewise, um, if you wish to have different design intent, we can always create our auburn shape and this time we'll do something like 18, 8, and 90. We'll click to place and apply. Next, we'll grab our dimension and I can add the same 20 to make sure that this auburn shape is centered in the other one. And then I'll grab my same 12. If we wish to define it by dimensions which again, no matter how the other things update, will always be 20 from this edge and 12 from this edge, which is great to be able to explain or define the way that things would say fit together or whatever other intent that we would have. We'll deactivate our sketch now. We'll go to an extrude and I'll say through all. After that, let's work on another feature. I'll highlight this top face here and activate a sketch. I'll create a rectangle. We'll go with symmetric again. One of my favorites for how easy it makes everything. I'll select this line and these two points to be symmetric. I'll go with a distance of 30. In this case, also a height of five, a distance here of 30. And I can choose, oh, let's go with coincident this time there, right? Now also, depending on intent, I can add a dimension from here to here instead of using a symmetric constraint. We'll deactivate the sketch, we'll extrude, Again, my intent is through all. I'd always want that groove there. Finally, we have one last feature. Let's again go on the XY plane. I'll project a reference figure and I'll make it that point with maintained association. Now that I've got my point, I'm gonna draw a simple triangle. We'll give this a dimension of 16 and an angle of 45. Now that we're fully constrained, I'll deactivate my sketch and we'll go with a extrusion, of course, mid-plane. We want a depth of five. And that should be our part. Thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next exercise.